Well, hello there. Welcome once more to Grand Choice Kitchen. And if this is your first time stopping by, I'd like to say a very warm welcome to you. Dearest friends and family, today I am sharing with you a fish stew recipe. This is very classic, a classic Ghanaian fish stew recipe. Absolutely amazing and I know you are going to enjoy it. Come along with me and let's do some cooking. Here are the ingredients I'm going to be using. Everything will be listed for you in the description box. So for the fish, I'm using some jackfish as well as some red snapper. I have some garlic, onions and shallots here, some rosemary, bay leaf, shrimp powder, seasonings for my fish. I have some tomato already blended and cooked down, flour, all-purpose seasoning, paprika, some tomato paste and some green chilies that will just go in in the stew. I'm going to start off by seasoning our fish. So I'm transferring my fish into a bigger bowl to allow me to season it. I'm going to be adding some salt, always according to your taste of course. I also have here some onion powder, ginger powder and white pepper. These I'm going to mix up and put on my fish. I'm going to save about this much. This is going to go later on in the flour to coat the fish. So now I'm just going to toss my fish, make sure it is evenly coated, and then I'll set it aside. Now let's get the oil ready to fry the fish. It's going to be deep fried, but I'm not going to use all this oil to make this stew. Definitely not. So whilst the oil heats, let's focus on getting our fish coated. I'm going to be adding here some flour, just a little bit of salt, and the rest of my uh, ingredients, the spices that went on the fish, goes in here as well. I'm going to mix everything until it's well combined. So now that this is done, we are going to coat our fish with the uh, flour and spice blend. Just like that so you pick one and you just immerse it into the flour coat it evenly yes I want the powder come on come on and then we are going to do this until everything is done and then we'll go ahead and fry so doing this makes your fish keeps its form it doesn't fall apart it also for me I think it gives it a little bit of crisp I like the flour on it and more importantly our moms used to back in the day make fish stew with a little bit of flour in the oil before they even make the stew so this is uh, another way of doing that you, you serve two purposes you get the flour in your stew of course just a little bit it improves the taste and of course your fish gets that coating which is delicious on it anyway and it helps it keeps it firm so this is the very last of it i'm going to coat it and at this point our oil is pretty hot as well ready for us to just start frying our fish so there we go. You definitely don't want to overcrowd your pot or your pan, whatever you are frying the fish in. You want it to have enough space so the fish cooks beautifully. Overcrowding it might reduce the temperature in the oil and of course it's going to be hard for you to turn your fish. So just a few at a time. It doesn't matter that you have to do it in batches. I'm going to fry this in batches. So this has fried for about 4 minutes on that side, I am just trying to flip it over and I will let the other side cook as well. It smells so good, so so good. Very simple, nothing out of the ordinary on it but you know a little bit of that ginger, the garlic goes a long way. So whilst the fish continues to fry, I'm going to chop up my onions and my shallots. The shallots are going to fry in the oil to go in the stew and the onion I'm just going to cut up into big chunks to, to just go in the stew when it's done.
I'm also going to add some garlic and that I'm just using my garlic chopper to cut it up so I don't have to use my knife. Checking on my fish now, it has fried beautifully. It is very crisp on the outside and looking golden just like you would want it to be. So at this point, I think it is time for me to bring it out of the oil so I can fry the rest. Just look at that. Just look at that. Okay, let's fry the rest of our fish. Time to come out. So perfect. This and some hot kinky. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's way too much oil. So I'm going to get as much of it out as possible. You just need a little for the stew. So I pretty much have here on the bottom of my pan about uh, three quarter or about a half cup of oil and a lot of the flour. So the flour is already fried here. That's how we, our moms would have made it. Even if they didn't coat the fish, they would have put a little bit of flour in here, fry it until it is golden and then add the onions and everything to it. So I've added my shallots and my garlic here at this point. I'm just going to let it cook until it is soft and not all the way caramelized when it be begins to get more fragrant remember i have used this oil to fry the fish and actually this oil i used it also to make my christmas chips so i'm saving it and making tomato stew with it so it has a little bit of flour already in there and now that from the fish as well so just perfect and i've added my tomato paste at this point i'm going to let it fry until it gets uh, all mixed up you know it soaks up the oil and becomes a little liquidy just like it's doing right now so it's not like big clots of tomato paste anymore so I'm going to be adding here my smoked paprika I'm not using fresh peppers today so that goes in here I'm also adding my dried rosemary as well as two bay leaves and I'm going to stir everything in here The fragrance that just hit my nose. Oh my goodness. And to think I'm doing this outside. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> this smells so good. So, so good. Okay, I'll be one amount for you. I'm going to be one amount for you. I'm going to be one amount for you. Please, please, please. I hope not. But anyway, so this is frying beautifully. I'm trying to get my tomato paste to cook all the way, like very fried before I add my tomatoes. And so that has happened. As you can see, it is very dark now. And I have added my tomatoes. This is more like my homemade tomato puree. So it's just fresh tomatoes blended and cooked all the way down. In the absence of this, you can definitely just buy crushed tomatoes or tomato puree from the store and use that. The color is popping. Very bright. Very, very bright red, right? Radiant. It's like, ah, uh, 
if my face could be glowing like my stew and uh, come any problem and come and follow your beer so anyway <laughs> I'm just constantly staring because I'm really trying to get this to all fried up and not burn at the same time. So instead of using any seasoning cube, I'm going to be using some shrimp powder. So well, it's seafood, it's fish, and I'm just adding some more seafood to it. But shrimp powder just gives it that beautiful flavor. It's just replacing the Maggi shrimp tablet that I could have used as well. And you can use that or any seasoning cube or seasoning that you, you want beyond. But this really works as well. So at this point, I still has cooked for about an extra uh, 20 minutes whilst I was constantly staring. Every now and then I would come and stare. As you can see, it is frying very beautifully. I am seasoning it with some salt at this point. And I'm going to also add some all-purpose seasoning. And that is pretty much it. That is all that is going into this stew. Very simple stew. No uh, extreme frills or anything like that. But the flavor, the aroma when this was done. Oh, you really need to try this. I know you are going to love it. Sometimes simple is amazing, you know. So my stew has cooked very, very down. As you can see, it is very thick. So I'm going to thin it out with some water. So this is about one cup of water that I added in here. And that is still not enough it's still very thick so I'm going to thin it out a little bit more so I've added about an extra quarter cup of water I'm going to stir this and let it cook up a little bit and the stew is pretty much cooked at this point I let it fry all the way down so now that I've thinned it out it is pretty much done so I'm adding in here my peppers. I have a bunch of uh, paposhito. These are green chilies and a few green habaneros as well from my garden in here. Uh, our stew is not so spicy so the kids can eat. But even if it was very spicy, I like my fish stew to be extremely hot. So I always like to throw in some peppers so far as I have them. And so this is perfect and now I'm just adding my fish in here and just trying to situate it so it's not uh, overly crowded all to one side because I'm trying to I'm going to be trying to mix it all up so it is very well coated it's not that much stew as you can see and a lot of fish so you just want to do it strategically so you don't end up making your fish fall apart because once it gets in the stew, it's going to start soaking up the stew and get soft again. And that's how you really want it. To soften up, soak up the stew and just have all that flavor of the stew. So pretty much that is what I've done now. I coated the first batch and now I've put the others in. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to make sure everything is well coated. And our stew is done. Steris Association. Once we have our fish in here, our job is done, okay? We can go on retirement. No more staring, no more rough, rough staring because once we do that, you know, we are just going to let this fish fall apart and all the fish bones is going to be everywhere. We don't want that. So anyway, I thought the stew was just a little bit too thick even though I am the queen of thick stews. <laughs> so I thinned it out just a little bit more and... Now it's just going to simmer down for a little bit but before we call it a day let's add our onions and that is pretty much it. That is all there is to this stew. I'm just going to try to stir up the onions as well. Let it just blend beautifully in here and that is it. Very simple. Meanwhile I'm cooking some rice on the side and that is all we are going to have for this. But of course you know this is so perfect with your kinky. It is perfect for you to make Gary photo. It is perfect with bread. Fish stew and bread. If you've never had that then you really need to try it. It is just amazing. So our stew is done. The rice is cooked. And so dinner is served. Very simple. Very quick. This was so well enjoyed and I really, really hope you are able to try it. The rice I've shared so many times with you so I didn't bother to bring you on board to do that. This is just rice vermicelli or spaghetti rice. So I just toast the spaghetti and add the rice in here, cook it with that green chili on it to give it that fragrance. This stew is the truth. It is really the truth. I really hope you are able to try this. I know you will love it for sure. 
Thank you so much for watching. It is always a delight to be able to come your way with something. I really hope you love this and I hope you give it a try. If this is your first time watching me, my name is Quan Chua and making simple, replicable family meals is my passion. And I truly hope this makes you want to subscribe. Please, please, please come and join this family and I know you won't regret it. Please share this video and give me a thumbs up. And until I come your way next time with something delicious, be loving, be kind, be happy. Delicious.